All right, stream is on. Started then. All right, stream's on. Oh goodness, hold on. That's my alarm to wake me up. Check. Turn off the other one. Okay. And um, music. Okay. Everyone good to go? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, I'm not in the roll 20. Hold on. As as all four I of tried. you uh, as all four of you separate at, at the palace and make your way off to your separate rooms to all get yourself some much deserved rest after uh, after the Incredibly draining Draco Lich fight. Um, we will, let's see. Right. We will join Rubius in his room. Okay. Rubius, uh, what are you doing for your rest and relaxation? Are you actually going to sleep? He's actually going to sleep. He's took him, He's taken off his armor. Alright, what's up? <sighs> Alright, I'm starting to roll the, what do you, the D100 to see if a, an assassin appears in his room. <laughs> <laughs> Make him regret his decisions. Uh... So, Rivius, as you lay down... And close your eyes to sleep after taking off your very heavy feeling armor at this point. The longest 10 minutes of his life. <laughs> you lay down in bed and close your eyes and feel yourself drift off to sleep very quickly. Then a few moments later, you find yourself standing in on a uh, on a plat on a platform that resembles the moon oh am I in the null sphere and you find yourself in a very familiar place at this point you find yourself <laughs> in what has been called your domain on in the Null Sphere. Nice. And it is surprisingly quiet around you. Yeah, that's weird. Wasn't there like a war going on? You look around uh, across the across the area, and you see. Nothing really. No signs of battle. No signs of of any kind of fighting or um, or just anything. There's nothing. As you take a walk take a short walk around trying to find out what's going on 
you you hear a voice behind you after a few minutes. Oh, you're here sooner than I was expecting. Oh, my my apologies. And as you turn around to look at the voice, you see. You see two very, you see two familiar faces that you haven't seen since a f since since the Fey Forest. Oh, hello. You see Glade Pine standing there with with her brother, now bound in a wheelchair. Oh, it's nice to see you out of bed, Skyrunner. Ugh, <laughs> uh, yes, it's. Good to get a little movement in. Even if it is with the help of my sister. Oh. It's surprisingly quiet here today. It's not Rivius. Yeah, it is. Last time I was here, I was in the middle of a battle. And I was trying to find where my gods were because we, I needed help. Um, and he starts explaining the whole revival thing and how Moonmo had to we make organs. That's an entire thing. Uh, Faronian gods never cease to confuse me. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so what are you two doing here? Well, we're actually here to speak with you. We Oops. sent out a call right. for you. But we never we I was not expecting you to for for your soul to answer so quickly. Oh, uh, we just got finished with a battle with the Drake Lake, so I decided to actually lay down and get some rest in. So I must have fallen asleep some for some poor ones. Well, it seems only fitting then that since you're here, I show you what I called you to do before. Come, bring me your, your, uh, what is it? Uh, the band, isn't it? Come, show me yes. your, show me your band. Yeah, he'll take, a, he'll take it off and hold it out in his hand. So much power has been gained in in such a short period of time. <sighs> yeah, it does make sense. We did kill one of Vane's well, creations. Yes, and that that act has inspired so much hope in the city of Attorney and as the word will spread across across the entirety of Valerian. This this power that you have now you can do things that even your Faerunian gods would struggle to do. Here, oh? Let me show you. Okay. And uh, she'll hand the band back over to you. Uh-huh. Now, I believe your band is capable of changing moon phases, and it affects various aspects of your abilities, correct? Yeah. Uh, it's usually on... Most of the time I have it on new moon. Because it helps with my... Helps keep the party healthy. Well then. And... She looks down. Skyrunner, if you could. And you see Skyrunner lift his hand up and... Wave it... Uh, 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 towards the sky. And you see the... The, the sky of the Null Sphere shift. And a large moon appears in, in the sky. Uh, mm -hmm. Where did your Luna Band end? On New Moon. 
Yes, it's on. It's currently on New Moon. I haven't switched it over yet. Okay. I'll probably have it on um something else eventually when the time needs. Um, so you see in the sky a dark moon, shrouded mm -hmm. in shadow, to mm -hmm. indicate it is a new moon. Now, change change the phase of your moon. Okay, and he'll change it to crescent moon. And as as you look up at the sky, you see that the moon very quickly sh the shadows start to recede as as the moon forms into a crescent. Oh, wait! I can do that. Indeed, a power even your Faroonian gods would scarce understand the potential of. I honestly, I don't understand how I can do that either. I'm not going to be honest with you. And then he'll tentatively change it to full moon. You watch as the shadows can recede once more, receding all the way across the moon. You see a bright full moon standing over you. So, does this does this affect outside the noosphere? Oh yes, the changes you just made have taken effect in the in, in the waking world. Huh. There are probably a few very confused people right now. Yeah, the poor lycanthropes. He says and, uh, as he turns. His as he turns his back to New Moon because he feels bad. <laughs> Skyron will just say, eh. They'll... They'll have, uh, interesting nights from now on, I feel. Perhaps one day we'll be able to find a way to deal with that situation, but lycanthropy has escaped us for now. <laughs> but that's not all that's, that's new and more powerful with your with your band and the power it now represents here in the sphere. And she will she will go on to explain your the rest of the abilities on your lunar band to you. The um your ability to move faster in your Twilight Sanctuary, the um the effect the uh, effects from uh, I believe it's New Moon that adds damage to either your weapons and spells now benefit. It's Full both. Moon. Uh, full, full Moon, moon's my bad. weapon. No, and... New Moon is dash. And you now have immunity to both radiant and necrotic damage in... Let's go, gaming! Yeah, she explains to you your... Uh, the benefits of your Lunar Band, which if you ever need to review is in your... Lunar Band Sheet. Oh, I can change my Lunar Band. It's the number of times equal to my Wisdom Mod now. Is that changed? Uh, oh, yes. yeah, it changed from half to full. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Alright. And, um... Wow. Oh, yeah, here's the nerf. It goes from temporary... From full maximized to always four in the die. Check the yeah, So basically, the way the way it would work now is that you would roll for temp HP as normal, and if it's under four, then they get four. Oh, okay. So you'll you'll always have average or above. 
Aha. Uh -huh. I see. And then I also gained perception checks made in dim light and darkness. Indeed. I need to rem I need to remember that. Cheat cheat. <laughs> it gets bigger. My cheat cheat gets bigger. Otherwise it's not. Now, I understand that there's a a lot that you probably wish to ask, so if there are any questions you have, feel free to ask them and then I will attempt to locate where your two goddesses are for you. Okay, so... Did... Did you tell everyone? Did everyone... Did Kaisunus the Draco like got found? Did everyone realize it, or did, or did, or did someone tell them? How do you mean? Uh, this is me I... as the GM asking. Yeah, so the Draco Lich dies, right? Yeah. And we got our new powers, right? Yeah. So, and she said that, um that our growth and powers inspired a newfound hope in the city, right? Yeah. Basically, it's it's been a few hours and rumors and the story has, start, has started to spread through through the city. And then mostly it's mostly carried by the out. guards. And it will start and to then... slowly leak out the city to across the continent. Oh, I see. I see. Oh fuck! Rubius will also. He also has. He also has. Um. He also can fuck. Around. He can also mess with the tides. Huh. Uh. Skyrunner will 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 say, not. Really, actually, just because you shift the phase of the moon doesn't mean that you change the moon's position. Oh. So don't worry about the tides, they'll be fine. Fishermen will be confused, and fish that, re that rely on the phase of the moon as opposed to the position of the moon will be very confused, but the tides will be fine. I see. That the positioning of the moon is the do is the domain of a different god. Oh. That, at present would be someone like me. That would be my job. Oh. I don't do that anymore, but that used to be my job. I see. So I am part. I control the phases, and someone moves the moon around. Basically, yes. If 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 it's left to its own devices, it will just it'll follow the course of normal physics and all that. But oh. most people don't really have a proper understanding of that yet. Anyway, it takes a long time before the before the mortals get a grasp of physics and astrophysics and dimensional travel, and it's it's a whole thing. Yeah, it is a whole thing. They they will eventually, though. Probably, if nobody bombs them into the Stone Age again. I mean... The dragons I'm... very nearly did that. Oh yeah, I did. I mean... I'm sure that with our... I'm sure with our new found ascension we won't let the mortals do that wait does that mean i'm immortal not quite yet like pine wall will say oh huh okay 
So we can so still die. It's a good thought to have, but not quite there yet. So we can still die. You can still very much die, yes. From old age. I mean... So, when we do ascend, can we go back? So, can we still manifest and walk around in Malarian? Oh, yes, very, very much. I mean, me and Clay Pine did it all the time. No reason for you not to be able to. I was just wondering because, you know. Besides, you're not, you're not bound by these, by the laws of these Faerunian gods when it comes to things like interference and stuff. You can do whatever you want, really. You know, I haven't told my whole family the whole, I'm turning, their, one of their children is turning into a god thing. You know? Hmm. You're, you come, you come from a halfling family, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Probably best to keep that a secret, then. Otherwise, One next thing youngest... you know, all of them are going to be coming up. Yeah. One of the youngest, actually. Not the youngest. But pretty down, pretty down the... Inheritance... Line. Hmm. Although it does make it does it does confuse little things because I had this incident with wild magic and it aged me a little so I uh, yeah I'm not gonna tell that them about that either though no. I don't tell them a lot of things honestly probably for the best like like the fact that you are technically a lord of a city oh oh. Absolutely, it's for it's for the it's for the Eternian city's safety. <laughs> Absolutely, like like my entire family three could be in the royal royal book of whatever it's called, but maybe I'll wait until it shrinks a little. No offense to my family. Uh, if it shrinks, the way your fa with the way I believe your family's been growing, they they might they might cover half the continent by the time by the time you're you're in your hundreds. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. You can... I have no more questions, really. Then I should send you off to find... To, to your goddesses. They probably wish to speak with you since you're here as well. Yeah, I was going to look for them. I haven't talked to them in a while, honestly. We both... We... All three of us have been busy after all. And uh, Skyrunner will look at you and just say, "Be sure that when all this is said and done, that you come to visit us in in the forest a couple of times. It's nice having company of people who understand what we've been through." Uh, of course. And it I'm, takes I'm a lot of sorry. effort to call people in their dreams. I'm sorry that Especially we have someone been who visiting. doesn't sleep. Yeah, I'm sorry. But I will definitely, when we have some free time, I'll give you guys a visit. No rush, sweetie. Whenever you're, whenever you're free, we understand you are in the process of saving the world and all. We are? I am, yes. And... 
uh, Glaipine will will flick her fingers and uh, the moon that you're staying on will will start to be covered in shadow and fade away as you start to fall before you find yourself let before you find yourself landing quite quite solidly in front of um, in front of two goddesses sitting down si seeming to have some tea with with a few other gods oh sorry Rivius? Oh, where did you uh -oh. come from? Uh, the sky? Clearly, but why? I was visiting. I was. I was. I was visited by uh, Blade Pine and Skyrunner, and then they. Then I had had them had a few questions for them, and then I uh, was sent to find you guys. Well, thankfully, since last time you were here, things have calmed down a little bit. Um, a lot of a lot of the more minor gods have decided to um, cut their losses in terms of trying to take your land by force, and have just gone back to Faerun. That's good. I'm sorry that I'm interrupting tea, though. Oh, no, it, it's alright. Uh, we were just discussing our the peace arrangements, or ceasefire at the very least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we've, we've kind of been fine for a little while, so we, we want a little bit of a break. Yeah, Besides, the war is... After the war your... Is after your defeating of the Drake College, a lot of a lot of the gods that haven't left have resigned themselves to the fact that they're gonna remain in relative obscurity and just they they're they're accepting the fact that you're gonna be a permanent fixture here now. I am building a temple, a uh, religious district. So you are and. They're actually very, very appreciative of it. They're excited to maybe get some new supporters and followers from from the city of Eternia. Yeah, this, I, I was like, there's not a religious district in Eternia because, you know, it's been overtaken by, you know. So it's just like, I'm sure there's a because there was a lot of um, of your fathers, my lady wound well went up when we freed the pits. As you may know. Yes, I remember most of them. They, uh... A lot of, a lot of them have joined your guard, I believe, actually. It's very, very, very encouraging to see. Yeah, yeah that's probably Gore's doing. He did offer that to them. Ah, yes, your big Minotaur friend. Yes. Yeah, the big Minotaur friend with the flaming sword that can that moves way too quickly for anyone's safety. Not mine. <laughs> I'm pretty safe though. All what of us were. Uh, all the. Uh, I will have you know. Just. As a note, we've 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 been keeping a we've always been keeping a passive eye on you lot. The fine up here stopped for a moment when he d d hurled you into that man. Yeah, I was about to mention that. I was pick I was consensually picked. He asked me if I could pick him up, if I he can pick me up, and I said yes. And then I was hurled into that man. Like. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you see Moonbow. I am not kidding you. When that happened, a few a few of them of the lesser gods threw their hands up and just said, "I'm done," <laughs> and they left. Saloon, saloon, yes, saloon, and Moonbow is just like pa 
small TV in the corner. And there's a fastball, a halfling fastball. Alright, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. I cannot contend with that. Honestly, I'm surprised it didn't leave when I called you to summon an arrow from rain from the sky. Oh, that was before all of this started, so... They thought they they thought oh. we were just giving you extra special treatment at the time. Oh, I can and do that myself we were. now, by the way. You can? Yeah. I can't do what? it as often as you can, probably. That's terrifying. Oh, I can also change some phases of the moon. And Saloon just, uh, you see several of the gods and Saloon just stand up and all of them in synchronous just so, you can what? Yeah! Dying Pine Skyrunner showed me! How is that even possible? I don't know. But he said I can, so... I think it's because of the whole we defeated the Draco Lich thing, and then I, and then the guards were like they defeated the Draco Lich, and then rumors started, and the whole uh, more people believing in you got you more power, sort of thing. Okay, then that's different. Huh? And you yeah. and you can see. You can see Saloon just trying to rationalize this. Honestly, I while, don't know. While Moonbow's just kind of leaning back in her chair, just like, I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> oh, yeah, the fighting the Dracoist was fun. I mostly uh, just helped uh, Ellen. Put deadly arrows into it. For some reason, it did, he didn't kill it though, so I had to do it. <coughs> <laughs> yes, that 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 young boy is an archer off to my own heart. Moonbow says, sipping on her tea, while the others all have a mild breakdown. Oh yes, oh yes. Local new local budding god causes a existential crisis in the noosphere. More news at eleven. But I'm glad that you that that there was a ceasefire here. There's also a ceasefire down in the living world as well, because of the whole it's winter thing. Oh yeah, you, you 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 mortals don't like fine in the cold, do you? Oh no, it's it's very uncomfortable, honestly. Especially since most of us wear metal. Mm, that would make that would make things more challenging, yes. People like Elwyn, Elwyn could, Elwyn and Ami could still fight in the winter, but me and Gore might would probably be uncomfortable, and most of the army. Hmm. Very fair, very fair. Um Well while our while our fellow fellow gods um process the fact that you're capable of changing the phase of the moon, maybe you should head back down and finish your sleep since it's been a long time since you actually slept. Your body probably needs it. Yeah, because I haven't been able to sleep because, you know, Almost got assassinated. People are getting. People got assassinated. Also, I didn't feel the need to. Someone had to keep watch, you know. I'm keeping but watch is a very don't... important job. Also, I don't need. I didn't need to sleep. I didn't need to sleep because of your blessing, though. But I do like sleep. Anyways, I'm sorry for the existential crisis. 
They'll be fine. Just give them about a week. Okay. They'll keep things quiet here for me for a little while. Yeah. I will be holding this over our head for the rest of eternity. Just gonna let you know that right now. Alright. I mean, we can have tea when I'm when when I send we can have tea later. Indeed. I'll make sure there's a that there's a fresh hot cup for you next time you're up here. Oh, thank you. Just try sending word before you show up again. Oh, I I didn't expect to be sent up here, honestly. I usually try do try to send word. Now, good night, Rivius. And Moonbow will clap as as you as your vision turns black and uh, you you open your eyes in your bed and find yourself back in your bed and just roll over and go back to bed. <laughs> go back to sleep. <laughs> go back to sleep. Alright. <sighs> okay. Elwyn. Yes. Let's get you done. Oh, yeah. I don't think he's realized he's part dragon now. That's because he because... isn't yet. <laughs> oh, he isn't yet? He definitely goes, but yeah, he definitely just, yeah, he definitely goes straight to bed. Yeah, so... We we pan across the, the palace as Rivius turns over and goes back to sleeping. And we go into Elwyn's room. And, uh... Um... Elwyn. You're... You have a lot of difficulty getting comfortable in your bed takes you a bit bit of time before you're able to actually fall asleep. Lots of tossing and turning and trying to find a comfortable position to lie in. Um, but after a while, you eventually just pass out from being so exhausted you don't care about how comfortable you are. And... Come the morning, um, you don't, you don't show up for breakfast. Yeah. Uh, you don't show up for lunch, don't show up for dinner, you don't show up to any of the meetings that happen throughout the course of the day. Okay. Okay, if he's not back by dinner, I'm going to be waddling over and taking on him. Alright, as... As Rivius, uh... Knocks on your door. No reply. Opens the door and goes in. Rivius, you see... You see that... Elwyn isn't in his room. Or, more specifically, you can't find Elwyn in his room. Where you expected him to be on his bed is a giant... Cocoon. Why? Why are you? Why, why are you primal Kerrigan or uh, primal Kerrigan ain't our ranger? Why are you shadow bringing our ranger? I poked the um, cocoon. It is hard and stiff to the touch, almost like it's instead of being woven out of like silk or anything that you'd expect a cocoon to be woven out of. It seems to be covered in scales. And... Can I find Sojourn? Uh, nope. No Sojourn. Oh, oh, okay. Hold on. I have to check my spells real quick. Do I have the message cantrip? <laughs> and does it does it work without sight? 
it does if you are very if you, it does if you are if if you're familiar with the target up to a certain thickness. How thick are these walls? It's a cocoon. It's probably very thin. No, I want to message the smart lady. Oh, oh, uh, they're interior walls. They're not that thick. I message the smart fox. They're probably uh, like, they're probably like a couple of inches of stone. Yeah, he he messaged her. It's like, okay, good news. I found Elwin. Bad news. I think he's a cocoon. Uh, I guess she'll be over then. All right, so Ami, you you make your way over to Elwyn's room, and you find very much the same sight. You find uh, Elwyn's bed with a large, slightly bigger than Elwyn-sized cocoon. Yeah, I don't know what happened, and what I don't, I can't find Sojourn. I don't know anyone else who can speak Draconic. Uh, so you know, I don't know what's going on. Um, is he okay? Can you ask Isidore? What's going on? I'm so confused. I don't think you as much as I as much as much as my scholar com, scholarly companion would be of use, I don't think he would have much to say upon the matter. So do we just wait? I don't know. I don't know. I I guess I invest look at the egg cocoon egg thing. Alright, uh, give me a, uh, you can give me I either know. an investigation or an arcana, depending on how you want to I... look at the egg. Gee, I, I just wonder what I want to, gee, I... well, you don't need to help me, because, uh, I just have advantage, I just can have I advantage on arcana. This cocoon? What, what is that insight? Oh. You, uh, you can't really learn the intentions of the cocoon, so it would either be an investigation fair. or arcana. 26. 26. All right, with a 26, you you look through, you look over the the cocoon, and um, it's it seems as though it re just recently formed. You can tell that much very easily. Um, and. Whatever whatever process is going on inside appears to be happening very quickly. This isn't going to be a several months worth of incubation period. It's probably only going to be a couple of days. Well, from what I can tell, uh, this isn't going to take months, so we're not going to be at our we're not going to be at our ranger for very long. If anything, you. Should only be a couple more days, but as to what's actually happening in there, or probably to him, based on... <laughs> ...process of elimination... I don't know what's happening now. But something's happening to him. Probably dragon-related, knowing who he got chosen by. Who, who he got chosen by. I could try and ask Bahamut. Yeah, we could try asking Bahamut. And ask what the hell he's doing with our ranger. Yeah, we could ask Bahamut. Um, is the tooth horn one use? That's not for Bahamut. All oh, right, that's not for Bahamut. That's anyway, for the ancient red black. Really... Can I really can check to see if I can contact Bahamut? Sure, go ahead. Cool. I'm going to guide instead. Uh, this will be a disadvantage because it's not your god. I know it's not my god. I'm just saying I'm going to release it. I'm going to uh, guidance this. Not just letting you know that it's a disadvantage. So. How about that, uh, right. about that 29? About that 29, my friend. I rolled a 3. What the fuck? I would have right, so and then you, a seventeen. You both you both head out into the courtyard and uh start yell start uh 
yelling out for uh, for Bahama trying to summon them. Um, and after after a good while, you you hear the beating of huge wings in the skies above as you see a large dragon descend and land in the court lot, courtyard with a thud breaking breaking several of the stone tiles we just fixed those Man. oh we we did no we did not that was those were fixed months ago months ago also we could literally just go get also we could just go get a mage to ending our shape zone whatever yeah um uh, just like anyways our, our deepest apologies, Lord Bahamut, for summoning you without our friend companion here. Well, yes, why have I been called? Well, we're calling him because we thought you might know something of why he's currently in a cocoon. He's in a cocoon, he's a so what? he spent, he spent he's an entire... Okay, so he's in a cocoon. He's in a cocoon. We went to sleep after defeating the Great College, and then the next morning, the next, and then today, I haven't seen him. We haven't seen him. He hadn't hasn't gone to any of the meals. We've had several meetings today, and he hasn't come to anyone. None of the guards know where he is. I can't find Sojourn. Long story short, we can't find we can't find Elwyn nor his companion and uh, the only thing in his room that is a new addition is a cocoon is a <sighs> him size slightly larger than him sized cocoon upon his bed which seems to be ra which seems to be traversing which seems to be whatever's inside is undergoing rapid <sighs> changes that should only take a couple of days and we thought you might know what's going on. You might know what's going on with him, because we don't. Again, our deepest apologies, Lord Bahamut. You see Bahamut start walking towards the palace, just... Um... And a you as... Want... Mm, go ahead. No, no, you... Okay, uh, Ami, Ami, Ami will put a hand up. Let him, let him do his thing. Let him cook. Okay. Yeah. As he, as he walks towards the palace, he, his form starts to shift and shrink as, as you see him turn from his very large draconic form into a smaller, um, into a smaller, more, um, dragonborn looking form. Hey yo! Writes down notes. As he, as he walks into the palace, and as the guards try to stop him, no, uh, he just he just walks past them, completely oh. ignoring them. As you tell it's them okay. to, just, it's fine. It's okay. They're going. He, he's he's a guest. He's going to see what's wrong with Elwyn. And as he... At ease. As Bahamut walks into the... Walks into the palace and... Makes his... Starts making his way towards Elwyn's room, he... He walks in and looks directly at the cocoon. <sighs> what is going on with you? And he goes and... Rests his hand in the cocoon. Hmm. Ah. I see. I don't feel like waiting. And he <laughs> shoves his hand through the cocoon. <laughs> and... Maybe so blink. And he pulls out. Uh, you you see him pull out a wing, and as um, he continues to pull that, you see that, that wing is attached to an individual. So so good. 
No. Oh. Huh? You see you see him pull out one out of out of the cocoon. Blink. Um, um, Come boy, I'm wake up. And uh Bahamut will give Elwyn a few a few slaps across the face. Light um, slap just to wake him up. Oh, excuse me, my lord Bahamut. Um What what is happening? Why does our friend have wings? I'll explain it to I'll explain it once he wakes up. I don't feel like explaining it twice. But you know what, that's fair. And Elwyn, after after a couple of gentle slaps across the face from from a from a scaly hand, you you open your eyes and you and you are face to face with a with a dragonborn. Do Good I morning. It's oh, evening, but that doesn't matter. No, oh, what? What's going on? And then you're released, and you sort of slump back into your cocoon. Yeah, like, is there like, what, what's the cocoon like? Just um, it was a little. It was a. It was on the inside. It is a little moist and very warm. Ew. Yeah, that's what so, I'm saying. So, afraid I get out of it. I get out of it as soon as I can. And as you do, you you find yourself kind of knocking into everything because you suddenly Wait. have some protrusions coming out of your back that you're not used to having. You. You try, you try to look behind you, and you can see your your newfound wings poking out behind your back. And you you look around, and you across your body, and you see that you are not entirely, but very largely covered in scales. My boys in Ara, but with elf ears. <clears throat> That's cool. Yeah, I I just kind of sh in shock, kind of. Damn it! He inherited the really crappy run cycle. Fuck! It's a downgrade. <laughs> <laughs> as a... as you're as you're recovering, you see the the dragonborn will just sit in a nearby chair and just wait for you to contemplate what the fuck's happening, and will wait for you to start asking questions. I mean, I don't. <laughs> What what happened? <laughs> you didn't. We were you day. were you were absent the entire day. Huh? What? Like, I guess I don't have as clock six thing or no. Uh, it is nighttime. Oh. Okay. Still, for from your perspective. Yeah. So I look like what happened? It's only been like, I, I guess I I don't know. I don't know. You've been gone hour. an entire day. How many times? I don't. I shouldn't have to say it twice. <laughs> Oh, oh. And then... He'll... Uh, he'll just ask, um... Alright, now let me lich. explain. I remember finding the Draco Lich and then... Getting exhausted from the magic that was coursing through. Yeah, so that was a... That was... And, uh, you see the... The, um, the Dragonborn look out the window. That was almost 24 hours ago now. Explanation: We summoned Bahamut without your permission, and then he and then he turned into a dragonborn, and now he's we're here. Yeah. Oh, hello. <laughs> this is a very uncomfortable form to be in, but I can't fit in the palace otherwise. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, I don't have enlarge. I don't have enlarge reduce, and I don't think he'd let me cast it on him anyways. I would not. No. Also, it won't even work. I still wouldn't also, be able to fit anyway. Yeah, yeah, I could say that. Can only... <sighs> Can all dragons turn into dragonborn? It's no. a ra well, and depending on who, on depending on the dragon, it's a relatively well-known yeah. phenomena that dragons can are there, rather apt there are some, There are there are some that are capable of shape shifting, but not all. It is it is a it is a well-known phenomena, and many have harbored suspicions of 
neighbors potentially being Ellen... shape shifting dragons. Rather quite Ellen fascinating, like... honestly. Ellen kind of like flaps his wings a little bit if he can, and then like not a lot, but like flaps his wings just a little bit to glide, I guess, or you know pick himself up very much off the floor. <laughs> learning, learning very quickly how to use. Them. Good. They'll probably come in handy. Yes, flight without magic is rather useful. <sighs> so, now, let me explain what has happened. It I appears don't... that my sister has finally accepted the fact that you're staying and has decided to bless you in her own unique way. What color are my skills, by the way? Huh? What color what are color? the scales? Just... Uh, your scales are a shifting prismatic color. Okay, oh, man. Pretty. Hmm. She has ordained to finally help in my endeavors across 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 the world, simply because of the fact that she has no real other choice. It's either that or get left behind. Yeah. We've already we've already been making strides to further your agendas of our own accord. So she does in fact not have much not have much of a choice. So it is a simple matter of <sighs> what is the best way to stay this? She has decided to give to give you aspects of dragon blood. Huh. You are in many ways closer to dragons than dragonborn ever will be and ever hope to really be. You're closer to you're actually closer to a kobold than than a dragonborn. And just larger and more I don't, want to say, I don't want to say this without sounding mean. Mm, more intelligent than your average cobalt. Mm. <sighs> At least I hope you're more intelligent than your average cobalt. Well, what I, well, I, can, well, what I can tell you, well, what I can tell you is that he's probably the meanest motherfucker I've ever seen with a bow. Granted, he was entirely steroided out of his mind on uh, my magic and. Oh. Ravius is magic, but still terrifying. Oh, Ellen, I was talking to uh, Lady Lady Moonba. <coughs> Lady Moonba. He says that, and I quote: "You're an archer after her own heart." I appreciate that. That's a that's a compliment. It's an unnecessary crisis. Which is strange, considering the fact that when I that when I knew her in Faerun, she was a spear woman, not an not an archer. Gee. Adopted the bow after coming here. Because yeah. it fit her name better. It was very confusing. Her name was always Moonbow, but she used the spear. It was very confusing. I mean, in some ways, uh, using a bow is just like shooting spears. It's kind of what arrows are. Just miniature spears. It's like in, like, retract the wings, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Like... You can, them. you can fold them in slightly. Yeah. You can't fully retract them, but you can fold them in, so they're yeah. taking up a little less space. Okay. Well, I suppose you should probably take some time to get used to your body, and uh, we'll probably ha and we'll have to explain why every to everyone why our uh, public spy master is now part dragon. Oh, <sighs> More so than he was before. I guess it'll be a secret. Uh, he does have he does have claws on his on his fingers, yes. Okay, but what happens? More extend, to more time? more specific. His his claws, his nails have sort of extended and curved into claws. Yeah, I mean, I guess okay. I can't really summon Sojourn here, but I guess I can. He's a large creature, so. Yeah, he can fit in the room. He just wouldn't be able to go through the doorway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I probably won't do that. All right. Um, and then we leave because now we uh fix our ranger. We thank Bahamut very night kindly. Maybe, maybe go maybe go back a little bit in time to the to the OG night. 
or something? Oh. Yeah, to Yojina, yeah. I guess that's what uh, Owen will probably after that. We'll just probably take a walk. <laughs> but yeah, um... As... Maybe as you, um... As, as everyone starts to leave, uh... Bahamut will just say to Elwyn, Come, walk me out while I explain to you everything that has changed about yourself. I will do so. And, uh, he will walk out and basically explain to you the fact that if you continue practicing with your... with your wings, eventually you'll... you'll gain enough... you'll gain enough strength and dexterity in them that you'll be able to properly fly. Uh... Uh, he explains that due to your scales and the wings, even custom-made armor isn't really going to fit on you. Yeah, so I was, ask, I was gonna ask, like, how are we gonna do that? Because I think I paid the cost already, but like, transfer the runes. Yeah. So, well. so the what? So basically, he as, as you're walking past, he asks the guard for a sword. Um, and the guard being very confused, but you tie the guard to just give him his sword for a moment. Um, and he te he slashes you across the chest, <laughs> and the sword just sort of the sword just sort of bounces off your off off the scales on your chest. I like feel congratulations, you now have natural armor. I like you do. You guy. feel. You feel it, but it doesn't hurt. It's more like. Yeah. It's more like someone brushing across across your skin. Yeah. It. It. It'll work, and don't worry about magical enchantments. Your scales are very capable of holding magic as well as any armor. So. Any half decent runesmith will be able to enchant your armor with similar magics as you'd be able to get on your leather. Like a uh, arcane tattoo? Yes, but those will have to be applied to the sections that are still skin. Okay. The scales themselves will be will require more delicate carving. It'll be a slightly painful process, but the art of having protection sometimes outweighs a little bit of pain. Nodders, nodders, yeah. Um, so are we outside now or no? Yes, you, you'll be, you'll be walking outside. Yeah, he'll unfurl his wings a little bit. Now, you, one of the first things you may want to do is just transferring the runes on your current armor over to your scales, which you the war he paid the cost for. Yeah. And after that... That's what he'll probably do. It's probably go on a walk, but when he... Like, he'll probably try flying a little bit walking. But then, like, you know, he'll do that. Yeah. Unless somebody aside, needs him, but yeah. Aside from that, simply... I imagine your bond with Sojourn is probably a bit stronger now as well. Yeah, I summon Sojourn as soon as I'm... Castle. I'll pick, um, I don't know, Fire and Ice for now. And, uh, you, as Sojourn is summoned, you see Bahamut just sort of. You saw, you see Bahamut sort of pat Sojourn on the head. <sighs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'm getting out of this form before I strangle someone. He'll, he'll and deep out. And uh, Bahamut starts walking towards the center of the courtyard, and as as he does, he starts shifting again and growing his wings sprouting out of his back as he transforms back into his into his normal draconic form. Now. You be a good boy and look after you, look after the city. I have to go and have a discussion with my sister about what she's doing. And then he, yeah, he's still bowing, but yeah, like he says thank you. And Bah Bahamut will start to flap his wings and 
fly off as you get slightly pushed by the wind, but you could you you almost instinctively unfurl your wings to just sort of catch the wind and stop yourself from moving. Yeah. This is gonna take some you getting used to. And then yeah, he'll do that unless Yeah, he'll do that. Go for a walk, try flying yeah. a little bit and go and get your armor sorted out. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. While he goes off to do that, we will return, we will return rewind by right. about 24 hours. Hoggers! Alright, looks like we're doing Ami Lost. Thor! Hello. It is now your turn. Yes. Gar, you're sleeping in, sleeping comfortably in your bed, nice and warm, after after getting your uh, your wounds treated, your burns and scrapes and the various claw marks that have sin that have damaged your fur. Mm. Mm -hmm. You're warm and comfortable in bed. You're relaxing. You're a about to fall asleep and then as you're about to fall asleep you start to smell something mm. you smell a familiar you smell something very familiar something you haven't smelled since you left home some of your traditional minotaur, minotaur cuisine from back home Gore would sit up uh, from his bed and uh, look around confused, see if there's anything in his room currently, or if it's coming from anywhere in particular. Uh, it seems to be coming from out in the hallway. And he will follow the smell. So, Gore gets out of bed and leaves his room and starts following the smell. Um... As you walk through the hallways, it, it seems to always be getting slightly stronger, but never, but never, but never feels like you're getting any closer. Hmm. You continue following the smell that eventually leads you into the main hall, then out of the palace, into the streets. You continue following the smell. You make your way towards the the poor district. You continue following, and eventually, the smell seem you seem to finally be getting closer to the smell as you come into into a secluded alleyway in the poor district, and you see. A makeshift fire with a pot over it and someone sitting there stirring. Hmm. Does it happen to be an armored figure? No, it seems someone who's uh it's someone it's definitely some a very tall individual, but they they appear to be cloaked, not armored. Interesting. Hmm. Hello there. Ah, Gore Brimden. Come, sit. Join this old man. He'll walk over slowly, and then eventually, uh, when he gets there, he'll stare at the guy, um, try and figure out if he knows him, or if he recognizes the voice while he walks over. Uh, but he will as him. as you walk over, he you see him lift. You see you see him lift his hood up, and uh, and you see the what look like the the tired eyes of an old soldier looking back at you. It's been overall not that long since I last saw you, but it's definitely been. 
it's definitely been an, some events that have happened since then. Spelling of a Draco Lich, taking over the city. Hmm. I don't believe I've seen you like this before, though. <laughs> no. It's... I didn't feel like wearing the armor today. It's getting heavier every day. Is that something to be concerned about? No, no. It's just me being old. Come. Let us have some soup. Then you can stay a while and listen to an old man speak. God fucking damn it! Stay a while and listen. God damn it! I hate both of you! Yeah, Gore will sit and take part in the soup. I can't believe you fucking stayed a while and listened to this campaign. <laughs> I spent spent a few weeks in your in your home studying and learning the recipes there just for this meeting wanted to make sure wanted to give you a little taste of home again that's very kind of you was everything doing okay over there i couldn't stop by there for too long last time i was in the area yes everything is fairly all right there the the stories of your exploits have been reaching back through the labyrinth. I may or may not be somewhat responsible for that. Children have been very eager to hear the stories of Gora Brimden, the just the hero of justice and conqueror of the of the racist city. <laughs> And as the as Minotaurs that you freed have made their way back to the city, the ones who elected to return to the labyrinth, they have been spreading the stories as well. And many of your people now see you as a paragon of justice. I'm glad my actions have had such an impact on them. And it's given your people a sense of newfound hope. Which brings me to the reason that I summon you here with the smell of traditional food. It probably isn't as flashy or over the top as the gifts your companions inevitably receive from their respectful respected gods but I wanted to inform you about the changes that have happened for you and uh he will he will explain to you the um, the new effects that you get from the warrior spirits, your whirlwind attack. Um, as well as the uh, as well as the fact that you will now be able to call on the knowledge of your ancestors for uh, nature and survival. And, uh, he'll, he'll just... But... That's business talking. Business is boring. You've been doing a lot of business the, this day. Draco Liches are not easy to fell. Well, <laughs> much easier than it... But I feared, considering my companion's strength. They were quite amazing. Mm, you did no small. You did no small part either. Trust me. 
I watched. <laughs> now. Tell me. How do you feel, Gore? As a warrior and a soldier in this unending battle. <sighs> I feel like I've accomplished more than I could imagine could have imagined before meeting them. And I'm very grateful for that. Good. Good. <laughs> Having companions is The saying, many hands make light work, is apt. It can be difficult to be a loner in this world. And that's something that I hope you continue to understand and respect as your ascension continues. Once, once you ascend, I, I think I will be returning to Faerun. This world doesn't need two gods of justice. And managing two worlds is exhausting. I don't know how the young'uns keep up with it, but they do. But me, I am tired, Gore. I decided to not wear my armor today simply because of the fact that, as I said, it's getting heavier. Traveling between worlds is exhausting. I don't recommend doing it too often. Well, once you are back, if you ever need my help, I can always return the favors you've given me. Indeed. Yeah, depending on what state this world is left in when we're done. I doubt any of the other gods ever explained it, but do you actually know what intent what they intend to have happen when you are done here? No, I'm not really. <clears throat> Suffice it to say, most of the gods in this that have that have come here from other worlds have come to a general consensus on one particular thing. If we can't stop Bane from taking this entire world, we'll stop him from... we'll make it so that he, so that he has no opportunity to take it, even if it means we can't have it either. Suffice it to say, when your job is done, do not be too surprised if you never hear from a Ferenian god ever again. I doubt any of the others have told their champions this, simply because of the fact that they are scared if they inform their champions that they'll be losing their gods, that they may not act as they should. They may attempt to preserve the life of the Undying, or be lenient on their punishment of Bane. And they don't want that. But I know you will never be that way, Gore. I appreciate your faith in me, but like many others, it is a bit of a... It's tough to hear that. <laughs> I, it is hard. That is certain. But 
It is important that at least one of you know the full story. If you choose to share that with your companion, that is your decision. I likely will. Uh, it's not something I could probably keep to myself. At least not from them. <sighs> I hope no. that doesn't get you in trouble with any other gods. <laughs> <laughs> They can try. <laughs> Mistra is very familiar with what happens if she tests me. <laughs> oh. I think I've heard a few tales about that. But, uh, I try not to bring that up around my companion. <laughs> She's uh quite powerful herself and is even best of me in an arena so i would not want to uh poke that back. yes i watched i watched that fight very very fascinating very interesting now let us finish our soup enjoy some good camar camaraderie and then you should go back to bed. It is late, and you had a exhausting fight. Uh, he looks around a bit, and uh, you know, there's probably also a lot of rebuilding to do after that stupid dragon. Uh, the rebuilding the unfortunately world. never stops. <laughs> it is the life of a of a god of justice, you're always cleaning up the mess of others. Often the mess caused by the other gods. They, uh, never seem to be able to keep their nose out of business, despite their quote-unquote rules against it. And uh, we will pan out as you and you and Helm enjoy enjoy some some hearty soup that uh, reminds you of home and keeps you warm. Mm. All right. And then finally, Ami. Sup. Um. All right, we will. We will go over to Ami's room. Ami, do you immediately go to pass out as well? Um. No, she would call for Eastor. Well, just kind of drag him into the room. With whatever connection the two of them have. <clears throat> what a day! What a day indeed! Oh, don't don't remind me. Uh, keeping the action report of that entire fight is was exhausting. I imagine you're probably more exhausted though, considering you actually fought it. Mm. Actually, I can kind of feel your exhaustion. That's a very weird feeling. Ah. Uh, just nothing. I was closer to death when a bugbear crit me. When a bugbear got a really good strike in me. Very, very long ago. Hmm. Actually, you yeah, would still know. More, you were just weren't able to talk with me at the time. Yeah. It, but it was le it's less the physical damage done to your body and just the fact that you use so many spells magic is draining i mean you would you would think me you would think being with you would think being mistra frozen would you know afford me some more reserves of magic but it uh doesn't hmm. maybe mistra is just greedy she seems like the type, not gonna lie. I will refrain from commenting on that for the time being. Who knows? Maybe we can put some research towards it. 
See if I can't Maybe. do it myself. We had a lot of research on our play, don't we? Well, and we spell the crystals. Indeed, we do. Yeah, we got we got like three months of the winter, so. Yeah, and hopefully nothing else comes up and up until, so we can put uh, an amount of time towards it. I'll also have to spend some time someday in Drag Rivius to replenish the glyphs that were that were used in the fight. Very effective. Indeed. I'll perhaps we'll have to try to use them on Gore next time, just so he doesn't he isn't left out. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fun. What Elvin did it is any indication? Yeah, will be. Well, we should probably, we should probably get some rest, or do you want to do some research before bedtime? Well, uh, if knowing Mistra, and I'm sure she's probably going to want to pop up, she'll pop up either way. So, let's do some research. Alright then, I'll get my quill. And he sort of, he sort of waves his hand and then a quill appears in his hand. Phenomenal. I'm really getting used to this to this whole spirit thing. It's actually really kind of fun. <laughs> uh, Look, well, living uh, in a book. It, it, uh, at first, living in a book wasn't all it cracked up to be, but I'm really getting the hang of it. Well, uh, <laughs> skill empowerment, and oh, I think we know what's going to happen next time. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Advantage. This is going to be a plus 18. Uh, well, okay, 32. Both of you. You just matched. Funny. All right. While you're while you pour over some tones for the next for the next oh, this... like, hour or so, huh? um, you hear behind you. You know, I was really expecting you to be in bed, considering everything you've been through. And. And. Just, 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 be, just because I, just because I expended vast, vast amount, used vast amounts of magic doesn't mean that's going to knock me out immediately. We can get in, we can get in, we can get in some research. Also, call it Isidore. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I didn't put money on it. You can't. You're a spirit. Yeah. You don't know, I might have vast reserves of wealth hidden somewhere in some basement somewhere. Do you want a legend lore that? Don't, you want but a... I could. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, to what to what do I owe the pleasure for for your visit this night? Yeah, just wanted to check on just wanted to check on my fa on my favorite student. Uh huh? <sighs> but it's my 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 appearance here is far more practical. Never been one, mu never what been much one for small talk. Nope, no, you you know you never have been, never were. And uh, she she will. She'll come. She'll come over towards your desk, and you see her just sort of point towards some books, and they sort of turn translucent, and she just sort of sits through the books. Hello. <sighs> so, where to begin? You've been very busy studying these crystals, haven't you? Well, when they could potentially be, when they could potentially make very good batteries. Batteries for spells with enough uh, refinement, and are the sole reason that just that the king's right hand is back in action. Uh, they are worth my time. Ah, uh, yes, the rediscovery of Warforge technology. I... Sometimes the ingenuity of of artifices is annoying, but well, I mean, if it? it's well, you could smite me. I'm the one who gave them the crystal. 
I could, but that would def that would defeat the point. And then I had to find a whole new champion, and get them, uh, and get them to, and get them to your level. It's uh, also I'm pro also I'm pretty sure I'd take a little bit more than just a simple smite to kill me at this point in time. At this point, probably, <sighs> probably two smites. That's assuming you get the. That's assuming you get the first one off. Besides. What 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 Alarian does doesn't really matter so much to me. So long as that that information doesn't get back to back to Faerun, I don't need to deal with Warforged again. <laughs> and why not? They're such wonderful and fascinating machines. Wonderful and fascinating machines, yes. But I worked very hard to make sure that more couldn't be built. Oh, so I have you. Oh. That's a fun little tidbit of information. It's a lot to work behind the scenes to to hide ancient ancient knowledge like like how to construct war forges. Well, for someone who has to adhere to the rules of non-intervention, you already love breaking those rules, don't you? <laughs> If anything, I'd say you do not follow them at all. Rules, rules can be bent, but I have never broken them. Uh huh. I'll, I'll uh, put that on the board of lies. You can call it what you like, but I speak the truth. I have never once broken my own rules. Here's the one who makes them. I you just bend them don't always bend them play by will. the same rules the other gods do. That's breaking them, Mistra, and you both know that. <sighs> but come. <sighs> yes, you didn't. What? Yes, you didn't. You didn't come here simply for me to patronize you as your student. <sighs> uh, not that I'd be able to stop you anyway. No, no, you wouldn't. That's why I like you. You remind me of myself. For better or worse. Indeed. Yes, you're gonna drag me Which back is... off to the... I still believe. God, no. It's too exhausting to do that. Hmm. I'll just sit, I'll just sit here and have a chat with you. Fair Thanks. enough. A lot more comfortable being here on your desk. Uh, I'm sure there's implications in that, but I don't care to figure them out currently. Now, why don't why don't you tell me what are your plans once you ascend? Oh, that's such a wonderful question. Probably a lot of. Figuring out the way things work, maybe some spell creation, maybe more research into its potentially progressing the way how magic, just magic as a whole, because it's quite it's quite expansive, but there's it could be more. Also, probably also probably do probably take up the trade of uh, picking someone to look after if they catch my interest. Mm, yeah, Seems fun. A champion's always fun. Yes, you you see, everyone else seems quite fond of it, so I might, might as well I might as well follow follow in the uh, family trade. Well, if you truly intend to follow in the family trade, then I should probably inform you of one of uh, one of the more important aspects of of the goddess of magic, at least my form of the goddess of magic. Then do tell. Advancement of magic? Very good. Advancement of this technology that artificers like to do? Not so good. Really? I would say the opposite, because if we could manage to way make a way if we manage to bridge the gap between the two of them, uh, it's just more benefits for everyone. Yes, unfortunately, it creates the implication of weakening 
those of those of us who employ the use of magic. If the common person is able to more aptly employ technology over magic, they're more likely to study that. Especially since it tends to be more convenient. Of course. That is the distinction some small part. But technology can only hold so can only replicate so much. <clears throat> I'm yes, there will sure. always be a place there will always be a place for mages in this world. That that is not to be argued. The problem so I... comes in of people becoming less What's a what's a kind way of saying this? People becoming less reliant on those that I on that which I consider to be more important. Well then, I see it as the more that it because the gap closes, the less pe the less reason people have to uh, discriminate against those who don't wield magic. That way, yes, it's just a better experience for all. Yes, and that is certainly a worthwhile goal. One I certainly appreciate and support. It just comes with the unfortunate with the unfortunate problem of And she she seems to think for a moment. It comes with the unfortunate problem that People who have the choice between magic and between magic and technology will more often choose the simpler approach, which for many would be technology. Perhaps uh, all we can do is but speculate on how things will actually go, and I'm sure I will have no small part, and I'm sure I'll have no small part in whatever. Happens in terms of magical advancements, since I seem to be Indeed. weak in balance out of some people. Ultimately, ultimately, how you decide to approach things will be up to you. Indeed. You will be your own goddess of magic. Just know that we may not always agree on the approach. I'd have no other way. Otherwise, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have reason to poke fun at you. Hmm. But yes, I'm sure, but also I'm quite sure that you enjoyed the spectacle of watching our Dragon Blessed Ranger play that Draco Lich out to waste. Yes, it was quite entertaining. I almost deemed it worthy of, in of involving myself, but after, see after seeing that Ranger at work with your exceptional magics, empowering them, I... I saw- I saw no need for it. Well, he wouldn't have said no. But, uh, cause, uh, the- the whole- the whole, uh, peace rule of don't- Opie and Thirteen intervene's been gone for about, mm, a year now? Ever since, uh, little star shower that, uh, routed an army. Yes, the what what more than a few gods have called the cardinal sin, but eh, cardinal cardinal anyway. <sighs> yes, wasn't there? A, yes, of course. Yes, according to Rivius, wasn't there a war going on over what territory we had in the Null Sphere of last time he checked in? Yes, That's still happening? and I, and and I have si and I have since banished many of those many of those those gods back to their domains. If they can't, if they can't understand, understand that your presence in in the null sphere will be beneficial to magic as a whole, they have no reason to be staying here. Fascinating. Fascinating. They've been returned to their respective worlds. They can come back at any time, but yes, they're smart, right. they won't. Yes, all that lies between all that lies. Next is the tear, and that's 
all the garrets in the fortress of the tear, and that's honestly probably going to be the hardest thing yet. <coughs> yes, the lost obstacle. Could just smack him because could just slam more than a couple meteors into it, though. Hmm. It'll hmm. certainly assist, yes. But now on to the discussion about the fortress of the tear itself. Specifically, the Undying. Indeed. If I know, if I know you, you have a plan for him. Oh, I've had a plan. Oh, I've had a plan for him ever since we read his journals. He is a warlock, and Bane is his patron. Ergo, I I soul cage his soul when we strike him down, and Bane gets denied, gets denied the soul of a warlock of his over 200 year old warlock seems rather cut and dry as you, as you so plainly say it you see you see mistress eyes slightly widen in surprise fascinating hmm stands to Tell reason me. if we go ahead What do you think will happen when you cage the Undying Soul? Well, the immediate effect, I would guess, would be that uh, Bane's going to get very uh, unhappy and probably try to wrest it from me. And I'm frankly coming to expect it at that point. At this point. Uh, and I'd probably I'd probably garner that I'm going to deny a Bane. I'd probably deny a Bane a significant source of power. Significant empowerment. Should I succeed in denying the Undying Soul from him? Since he so deigned to steal his son's soul when we tried to bring him back- when we brought him back for oh so little time. <sighs> yes. I- I like this plan. It's oh. far cleaner than- simple murder well, of course and also another part of it is as much as the undying is a man who has committed many crimes he is but a victim of circumstance with the opening of the tear and of bane's machinations since the beginning yes many people are victims of the tear and it's a, and it's and its original opening the dragons were quite violent Yes, and they were also Bane's fault. Indeed. Oh, I also had another small idea. Well, I'd say small. This one might have... This one might have a couple more repercussions. <sighs> when the time comes, I simply wish... I will simply wish to inform the world of its history. Of its true history. With the part we have played up of uncovering it, hmm. if people if people are if people know the truth of this land, they will know, they will probably rise. They will probably rise up, and you in chorus to break down Bane. That's the idea, at least. And hmm, and Bane's since it is, back. and since and since. The law of this land is the more that people believe in someone, the stronger they become. The more that people believe in us, the stronger we become, and the and the easier of a time we can take the easier of a time we will we will have to take down Bane. Hmm. Very interesting prospect. Dangerous to be sure. And when have you known and when have you known me to shy away from dangerous plans? Ah, that's that is why I like you and why I chose you. This is it is now. I have a plan of my own as well. I'm not surprised. One that you may like. You may like the potential of for okay. its for its potential effects that it could have for you and your substantial power. Okay. I am listening. You will be at the center of 
of where all magic flows into this world. This is very true. Yes. I could, with your permission, I could link your soul to the tear. <sighs> and you would be able to use the tear's power, raw and unbridled, for yourself. All right. What's the catch? Because that can't. Because that would absolutely have some sort of repercussion. Naturally, power does ne never comes without a cost. You will be, in many ways, not too dissimilar from the Undying himself. I'm. I'm. <laughs> In terms of the whole undying thing, I'm, ar I'm already almost there. I'm already almost there. I live, I'm living, I'm currently going to be living for 700 years for damn sake. But instead of a, a warlock devout to a patron, you will be your own god in control of in, in control of the magic that flows into this world. In many ways, you'll probably surpass even me in power. If only for- if only but for a few moments. <sighs> the risk comes in that so much power can overload the soul. <sighs> it will not kill you, but it certainly could do damage. And possibly leave you in a vulnerable state. But that is where I can come in. I can protect you while you are vulnerable. I like it. Excellent. Honest, honestly, a third plan was just some like ritual circles, like those ones that we had to deal with on the way into the city, over over the cities of the over the cities that. Over Eternia, Larian, well, Etherian. It was just so people could pray for us. No, I like to find far more. We must stack. Th we must stack the deck in our. We must stack the deck in our favor. I'm no card player, but even I know that. Then I leave you. I leave you with with that to reminisce on, as well as. As well as one final gift. And what may that be? Since you meant since you mentioned it, and Mistra will flick her will <laughs> flick her fingers and you will see another tail generate out, out out from your from your back. Ah God that feels always feels weird. Make that eight hundred years. Almost immortality. Hm. Only just just a bit Nearly more. Nearly there. Nearly there. And okay. I'm sure I'm sure someone as intelligent as you can figure can figure out the changes that that have happened to your brush. Uh, yeah. I don't think I need to coddle you like the other gods inevitably are coddling theirs right now. The weave is almost mine to command. Almost. And when our plan comes to fruition, it may be even more so. Indeed, the magic of a multitude of worlds combined should be interesting. Perhaps I can split it with the others. Perhaps I could share some of it with the others. Hmm. I'll have to think on that. Uh, the logistics of that? Not that I have any way to practice. We can many discuss plans. that another time, though. Many, con many plans, many contingencies. You know the deal. Indeed. For now, though, I think it's time you go to bed. You can you can do more research in the morning. Yeah, oh, you're right. And I shall go and facilitate the course of my plan now that I have you agreeing to it. Excellent. Should be a blast. 
literally. And Mistra will bow to you as she fades from existence and the books that she was sitting through fade back into existence. Isidore? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, sorry, sorry. Put, put, expand, put expanded defense magic on the list of things we need to invest time into. And he gives you a salute. Um, just quick, quick question. Sup? Did this just sound a little weird talking about her plan? Mm. Like, felt like she was hiding something, didn't? Wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it's to be understandable that she's not going to tell you the whole yeah. story, but it feels kind of important in this instance, doesn't it? Perhaps, but. I, it's not like it's not as if I've been hiding. It's not as it's not as if we haven't been hiding things of our own from from our party. True, true. Just might be worth might be worth adding to the research list to figure out what, uh, quote unquote, joining your soul with the tear would entail. Yeah, yeah. I should probably do that. Although I'm very certain there's not going to be much to find find out in terms of traditional recordings. Not that, yeah, we, so not that, it's not that little, we ever it's gonna, not that we ever have much of that to begin with. Yeah, so it's gonna be unfortunately a little difficult to get up close research done as of right now. Not necessarily. We have rather free access if uh, through a bit of trial and error, of course. Remember, I saw the lore. I saw the I saw the helm of teleportation. And I do know true, fly. True. <laughs> There's apparent. also that arcane eye, which is very useful. We could use it to at least get some observational studies. Now you're, th now you're thinking like a wizard. You've come a far away from when you were trying to come to terms with the fact that you were dead, and that we were searching, searching for the library. <coughs> yes, it's. Uh... <sighs> kind of had to adapt quickly, you know. Yeah, we're we're getting there. And who knows? We have a. Who knows? We we may we might even get be, be getting to the point where we could bring you back. <sighs> God, that'll be something. Oh, no. but, yeah, well, I'll uh I'll add it to the list while you get while you got while you get ready for bed. Oh yeah, remind me in the morning. We have to go. We have to do something about that arc mage. Yeah, so we have to track him down. I wouldn't be surprised if he made his way to the fortress of the terror as well, but who knows? Maybe he went somewhere else. Well, we could always. Assassin. I'm less worried about the assassin than the archmage, honestly. As much as I despise him, as much as I despise that assassin, frankly, I'm half tempted to just wish, to just invoke the power of wish to drag that ba that bastard archmage into the into here, on our turf. You won't have any fucking backups this time, but you won't have any backups this time, bastard. Mm. Isidore nods as he as he starts noting things down. I'd use wish I'd use wish more. I'd use wish more freely, but there's not too much I can do about there's not quite much I can do about it without potentially risking losing it on the more Un normal Strength things. Ideas. Oh yeah. Uh, since I leveled up, uh, I use wish. I cast simulacrum. There's not a simulacrum of Ami. You can as you do that. As you do that, Ethan just looks from looks back and forth. Um, a oh simulacrum. God, two of them. Don't worry. Significant. Don't worry. Getting in Can't, Can't do nearly as much as me. Basic, can, okay, can't good. even basically learn though. You can, uh, you can direct her around, have her interact with the real world, <clears throat> use her for research overnight if you wish. And while I'm gone, not that you can stay around when I'm, since you're on my person, but you know, yeah, efficiency. You can do at night since I can't really sleep. Indeed. Knock yourself out. And, uh, 
to don't don't be afraid to get all dangerous. Right. I guess just don't um, kill me in the process. All right. Guess, um, anything, other army. Let's do some research into what. Um. Let's see what we can find about joining your soul with the tear. I guess. Thumbs up. <laughs> It's not right, technically how some. It's not technically. It's not. Yeah, they can talk. But uh, that's that's a problem for a that's a problem for a different week. All right. So, the Sunil Akram will continue doing the research that you started um, with Isidore while you Ooh, go I... to bed. She will self. She will self note. We uh, uh, put. Re-add spell modification onto the list of things to research. Daughters. Sorry about this. <laughs> Sorry about that. But it's just like mo spell modification. That's a thing you that. In your thing, in your brush. Well, thing. well, yes, but a more broad sense of like I modify the effects of spells, like on a like the modify spell from the. Playtest, but no more like, know. yeah, it's that's a problem for like, problem problem for future us, DM team me. Yeah. I'm gonna All have right. To go. Yeah, I was oh. about to say that will be where we have to wrap up today's session because we had to start an hour late. Well, yep, hour and twenty minutes I'm, late. I'm, but shit, I'm sorry. No, that's uh, fine. It's, that's, it's that's Con's largely fault. on my power company. It's it's largely on Con's fault. Uh, figure out loot, gun. This is a threat. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, thank you, thank you for playing, Tyson. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Have a good night. Okay, I'm sorry, I have a question. I may have an answer. Why do you keep doing this? <laughs>